back to Rolando Estacado. My name is Rolando, and for today's episode, we are going to be covering another very special tomahawk in what is going to be a series and library that's going to be built around this very special tomahawk. And this tomahawk happens to be the Winkler Sioc RND Compact Tomahawk. I do have the full size coming up, so we're going to be reviewing that shortly, but we're going to be reviewing the compact first and foremost. I went ahead and did an unboxing video of this, and I highly recommend that you take a look at it first because that one's going to give you a bit of the background of my impressions and my initial experiences with the Tomahawk. I don't move with it. I just unbox it. I talk a little bit about um, what I think about the handle design, what I think about the blade design, and this video is an expansion of it and some of the applications that are specific to the Tomahawk. Make sure you take a look at that video. It's a good partner, synergistic video to this one. So I will say a couple of things, a little bit of background. When Winkler first started to design a military axe for Special Forces, he was approached uh, by somebody in the special forces who happened to like his work. And this is, uh, I think this is based off of an autobiographical uh, article, if I'm not mistaken, written by Winkler himself. And that the original idea of the uh, Winkler Tomahawk is currently what's on his page, which is the combat axe. And notice that it had a straight handle. But in time later down the road, they started to work with the Sayoc Kali group, the Sayoc Tactical Group, and they ended up uh, collaborating with Rafael Kayanan, who is not only an instructor with the Sayoc Kali group, he's also a designer. So lo and behold, that's how the Winkler Sayoc RND Tomahawk was created and is now the Tomahawk that it is today. This is something that you can find on WinklerKnives.com. This is a very famous and legendary Tomahawk because this is what is used by American Special Forces. If I'm not mistaken, specifically by the Navy SEALs, but there's a possibility that it may have expanded to all other special forces in the United States. So it's, it's very fantastic in that way, in that the fact that it is highly utilized and highly revered by American special forces, I think that says a lot about the tool that we're going to be discussing today. So first things first, in terms of um, what we're gonna be covering in terms of application and movement quality, by taking a look at the Tomahawk, I know the first thing that everyone is gonna be asking is this. Well, how does it move? How does it feel considering that this is A, a Tomahawk by design, but also B, this was designed by Rafael Kayanan, who is part of the Sayoc Kali group and the Sayoc tactical group, if I'm not mistaken, trains all American Special Forces. So the entire pedagogy and curriculum uh, in terms of the use of the Tomahawk has its foundations in Filipino martial arts. So the first thing that everyone is going to be asking really without handling it first and foremost is, well, how does it feel? How is it compared to? So when you first take a look at it, when you think of Tomahawk, the first thing you think of is, well, uh, the kind of Native American tomahawks, especially the ones that you see, when you think of Native American tomahawk, the first thing you think of is another Winkler design and the kind of tomahawks that you saw in that fantastic movie, Last of the Mohicans. And if you take a look at those, they're going to have some similarity to this cold steel trench hawk. Now, this trench hawk, what I mean is that you have a long handle, and it's relatively circular. So it's gonna feel like a stick in your hands. So it's not gonna have any of the grip sectioning that you will find in a Winkler Sioc Tomahawk. So when you first look at the Sioc Tomahawk, the first thing you're gonna think of when you hear the word Tomahawk is what I was just holding, but it doesn't behave that way. So the second thing that most people ask is that, well, since it has uh, it is connected to a Filipino martial art, Sayo Kali. So how does that now fit within the curriculum? So my hope with this video is to shed some light on some of these questions because those questions are very broad and they have a lot of scope. So to answer the first question, well, since it's a tomahawk, how does it feel? Does it feel like other tomahawks? It actually doesn't feel like a tomahawk. It doesn't move like one and there's several reasons for it. Number one, 
If you take a look, a very close look, and again, I reviewed this in my unboxing video, is that if you take a look at the handle, it's not straight up and down like your typical Native American tomahawks. It actually curves. Number two, it is sectioned. So you see sections on this compact. You have this bottom section, so my hand can actually go right here. And then you have a middle section where there are about three finger grooves. And then you have this pistol grip section at the very top. So you have these three section groups so that your hand knows exactly where it needs to be at all times. And from my own exposure to Sayok Kali and my own time that I've spent training with Tomahawks, this is very purpose driven, very specifically so. And I'm not sure if you can see it in this video, but I'm pretty sure you can see it. I made sure you could see it on the unboxing video is that the tribal design that's on the handle actually indexes in time, just in the right place with each grip section. I think the reason for that, aside from it being fantastic and aesthetically pleasing, there's a way for it to give that kind of tactile placement of the hand. So it's not just the grip in a gross motor sense, but also getting, um, but also getting the fingers used to where it needs to be. I don't know if that's going to play a very big role if, for example, you as a practitioner or if uh, special operators happen to be using gloves. I think it, I don't think it is uh, something that plays a big role uh, as it relates to special forces use in terms of the tribal stuff. I think this is something that's good for people like us who happen to be civilians. But I think that the handle design being curved, the fact that it is sectioned already tells me by the way it moves and the way it feels, it doesn't handle like your typical tomahawk. So the question is, how does it feel? How does it handle? Well, it is normally associated with the American buoy. And I'm going to give you a fine example here of an American buoy. This is the Bagwell Damascus that you've seen in a lot of my episodes and I like showing her off. And one would think, especially with the pistol grip that you see here and it's dimensions, one would think that, all right, well then maybe, maybe it might feel somewhat the same, but not really. So what you see here is first and foremost, a buoy has that long edge. You have a lot of edge, whereas on the Tomahawk, there's not a lot of, of edge. Also number two, this is a much longer tool. So it's not going to feel like a buoy, nor is it going to function like a buoy. It does behave like it in certain ways. It doesn't really comply completely with the uh, buoy paradigm. So then how does it feel? How does it move? It feels a lot like another military classic, but not an American military classic. I'm talking about the Kukri. Now the Kukri, it feels a lot like a Kukri. Now, my own experience with the Kukri is that, in my opinion, it has a lot of chopping power, a lot of slashing power, just because of that amazing recurve. But if you are to compare it in terms of cutting surface, the cutting surface is also greater than the, the Kukri is, has a greater cutting surface than the Tomahawk. So then one would then ask, well, Rolanda, then why even bother with a Tomahawk. Why did our American Special Forces invest in a Tomahawk? Why did you invest in a Winkler Sayoc Tomahawk if it doesn't have the same kind of cutting surface? Uh, it's not as big as a uh, Bowie knife or even a Kukri. So really, Rolando, what gives? So these are my insights into it. A lot of it has to do with the versatility of the tool. And that versatility is so complex that please allow me time to share this with you. The fact that it has a multi-sectional grip. If you think about what our American Special Forces have to deal with, if you've ever even seen any of the episodes of Terminal List, you kind of get an idea in that it's not just dueling. It's not like two guys in front of a gas station with two machetes and they're going at it. This is a very different thing. A lot of what they have to deal with, in my opinion, a lot of those altercations, once a tomahawk is introduced, 
it's a little bit more like a dog brothers gathering wherein it starts at long range then it gets closer then eventually once it gets closer it eventually goes to the ground where it's not just striking cutting slashing blocking eventually there's some form of grappling but ultimately there's a question of retention and one of the key features i have found with this multi-sectional grip is that it allows you to retain your tool retain the weapon just in case there is a fight for it so this multi-sectioning in my opinion has a lot to do with having the ability to change hands having the ability to position your hand in such a way so if there's a fight you can kind of move it and wrestle the tool back and now you're in this grip how about that the other thing is that the head of the tomahawk itself is extremely unique from what i understand the head of this tomahawk which has that classic front spike there are several key advantages to this front spike first and foremost from what i understand this tomahawk design borrows a lot from the Filipino Igorot axe. So the axe of the Igorot tribe, which is considered really, if you take a look at the design, is really one scary tool, but extremely modified for the uses of our American Special Forces. So you see some of that in this front spike. So firstly, that front spike turns this into a very different kind of weapon. Number two, this portion over here, the hooking of the tomahawk allows for a lot of catching, pulling, and securing. And there's a lot of things that you can do with this. So if I'm here and I put this on my wrist, you can already get a sense of what this tomahawk can do. So by comparison, and I want to show this to you, the reason why I like that it's not sharpened and also B, why it has that kind of space because it allows for catching this is very different from a cold steel trench hawk because since it doesn't have that kind of space you see how that's already going to cut into my flesh so it doesn't have the same kind of catching ability the same way a winkler psyop tomahawk does uh, some people prefer the sharpened beard some people prefer that it's narrow that way because they think that well you know it can inflict more damage but sometimes damage but sometimes damage isn't necessarily the end game sometimes the damage is just controlling the opponent and in many ways that aligns with my own exposure to martial arts specifically shinkageru in that sometimes killing the opponent isn't really the goal there is another way of approaching the opponent the other part that i like about this is that this part the head of the tomahawk itself is flat and it's rounded so the fact that it's rounded means that if i'm gonna punch somebody with it or use it as an impact tool like so look at how just neatly it goes under my chin so my ability to restrain somebody using this without using deadly force i think that's pretty cool the other thing that i really like about this is the spike and the fact that the back spike is not sharpened why is that important well if for some crazy reason in the fog of war I do something stupid and then I do something like this and oh my god that really hurts if this thing had a point a uh, pointy edge to it yep if I do this I may be wearing Kevlar but hey I'm a civilian but if we're thinking special forces it's not it's not something that can do damage to them and I've seen that and noticed that in some tomahawks that hey that that back spike can be a little aggressive and if you're not careful and you're selling this to your civilian consumers it can actually hurt them uh, of course it's on them ultimately on the consumer to be very careful but at the same time it's a design aspect that has to be considered do take note that native american tomahawks there's a good majority of them that don't have the back spike and i imagine that there's a reason for that so these aspects of it there's four of them take a look you have this beard right you have the spike, you have the top head, you also have this back spike, but there's something else, something else that involves the front spike that I think really gives it a super effective and powerful advantage. Because as we've mentioned before in the buoy, in the buoy videos, that Bill Bagwell really believed in the superiority 
of a buoy knife. If a buoy, a knife, is held in this manner, and if we are cutting in this direction, that point is trailing behind the edge. So the sharpest part, and frankly, the most powerful part of the knife, is trailing completely behind it. And he demonstrated the uh, trailing point, leading point theory on a balloon, wherein a trailing point can't actually pop a balloon, but a leading point can because reduced surface, more surface tension, increased PC, uh, PSI. So now all of a sudden the balloon pops. And that's what makes the buoy with the buoy back cut so effective. And I think that the same can be said to a certain extent with that front spike. What happens with that front spike is that it turns this spike and that initial blow into a leading point. So it's almost like a back cut coming straight at you without necessarily turning it into a back cut. So just the versatility of that steel head in terms of what it can do, impact, catch and pull, securing, restraining, this can be restraining also, leading point, you have this super sharp edge over here and this back pipe, not only, and also including the sectional gripping that is, that changes the range, that changes leverage points, but also very good for transferring and having to retain the tool. I think in many ways, I think in many ways, this is just as good, if not better than the American buoy specific to the needs of our US Special Forces. Because if we are to go on the assumption that the kind of uh, altercations that they run into, let's put the firearms aside for a second, because that's a, that's a Captain Obvious moment. But if by the time they're using their tomahawk, they're having to move more into the kind of exchanges like in a Dog Brother situation where there's long range, middle range, close range, and ultimately some form of grappling and restraint, you're gonna need a tool that has more than one kind of grip and if the person tries to wrestle it from you you have a way to wrestle it back you can't necessarily do that with a buoy because with a buoy or a kukri you only have one place to grip it and by the time that person has secured that area where they have grabbed your hand for some strange reason and it's some sort of struggle to and it's life and death and they've grabbed your hand it's really hard to re-secure that hand because, well, do I let go? It's not a very good option to have. But the beauty of this specific Tomahawk, this design in particular, is that it gives the practitioner and the operator to have options to retain the tool. What I'm about to express to you is my own understanding and my own personal preference on how I would like to move and train with this fantastic Winkler Sia Compact R&D Tomahawk. Thank you for letting me share this with you, and I hope you enjoy this video. The Sia Winkler Tomahawk is perhaps the most complex, multi-tiered weapon of war I have ever handled. First thing I'm going to show you here is the longest range handle for it, holding it at the butt end of the handle, and I will demonstrate for you Cinco Terra's five strikes from Filipino martial arts. So there are shoulder lines, elbow lines, and then a thrust. These are the classical five angles, and you can deftly use it with this tool. So you can see that you can flow with it at long range, even though it is the compact version of it. You can do multiple angles of striking, but one of the features that I really like using this particular tomahawk is the fact that that long range can also serve to catch the opponent. So you can do the beard aspect of the tomahawk to catch behind the shoulder, behind the neck, and secure the opponent. So you can do multiple strikes from high line, mid line, low line, and then ultimately use that catch. But the favorite feature that I have is that front spike, which I highly recommend because it embodies Bill Bagwell's leading point theory, wherein the leading part of the edge, typically the point on a bagwell buoy, is what arrives there and does the most damage because of its concentrated tip. So when you're using it with the Sayok Winkler Tomahawk, you can do extensive damage using that front tip. It gives you the most range and the most pounds per square inch upon impact. Now I'm going to show you the mid grip and this mid grip is what's going to allow you to do most of the inside work 
which is from Dizon's system of doublete. Rapid strikes on the inside line, which attacks the inside aspect of the arm and also the midline of the opponent. You can use the butt end of the stick of the puño to go ahead and make those strikes, but it's really for those midline attacks and midline strikes because it is getting you ready for all types of close quarter combat. So you can switch from long range to mid range and this is what makes this tomahawk spectacular because from long range you can do these opening attacks which then allows you to get inside. This aspect of the tomahawk alone makes it highly effective and highly favored with this type of Filipino martial arts usage which from what I understand is very prevalent in our American Special Forces. One thing I also really like is its ability to flow from high line to low line, but since this is a Psyoc tool, this is something that I also like to use using their 3 of 9 template. I don't think this is something that's prevalent in terms of their curriculum, but I like to use it with this Psyoc Tomahawk. So what you're going to see here is some long range, some mid range, and then the 3 of 9 template using the Psyoc Winkler Tomahawk. I think it flows really well from a 3 of 9 standpoint. I have yet to experiment with left 3 of 9, but if you take a look at that movement and how fluid it is, I see it as being spectacular using the Sayok Winkler Tomahawk using the 3 of 9 template from the Sayok Kali methodology. It's just spectacular and it feels really great. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the pistol grip for this tomahawk and this is when we start to use that handle as part of an impact entry some coverage as well but this is where i like to use this type of footwork where the leads change because what you're going to do is enter with your open hand and from this point there is a punching aspect with the tomahawk in rapid strikes so i can only imagine our special forces when they're trying to secure uh somebody who is being a little resistant there on the opposite side of the enemy of the battle line and guess what we're going to make them pay and make them feel what it is like to be on the receiving hand of that Sayok Winkler Tomahawk so there's entry penetration and then we extract so you start to see the advantages of this tool also in terms of being able to secure an opponent using limb control and some limb destruction that's one of the amazing versatile advantages of the compact in that the length of that handle is enough so that you can also use it to secure not only in terms of just using the beard of the tomahawk but using the handle of it as well the beard is good at securing not just the neckline but also the elbow line which gives you control of the entire body so now what i'm going to demonstrate is what multi-gripping in a single attack is going to look like as the range changes from long distance, medium distance, and then ultimately short distance. This one attacks the low line right behind the knee. And then once you secure the back of the knee, you can actually turn your opponent around and start to attack from a more grappling type of situation where here you're controlling the opponent. And if you're surrounded in any sort of way, once you've secured your opponent, you can actually use that handle for retention to secure him. And then in this portion of the video, you will see that I actually use it to make sure that nobody comes near us once I secure the target. So I get behind him, I go ahead and get under the shoulder to get this kind of seatbelt grip. And then I use the bottom end of the tomahawk to go ahead and control him, then switch hands and make sure that nobody else comes near. So I'm gonna show this to you at a little more full speed and you start to see how easily and how fluidly this tomahawk can go from long range mid-range to close range to secure the target and at the same time make sure nobody else comes clear. If the target decides to use both hands here to control the weapon hand, you can actually switch grips because once you switch grips, you can go ahead and turn that towards him or you can once again turn it towards him to a completely different position. This is something that doesn't have to be discussed or go into detail with because I think once you're in this kind of position, you have an understanding that it's basically checkmate, game over. So when you go ahead and start to envision all the complexities of what this tomahawk can do, this is something that is just really simply spectacular and I highly recommend. I do thank all the people at Knife Art for making this purchase so fantastic and wonderful. 
Thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around. Stay tuned. More videos to come.